In this video, we're going to discuss how to graph the production possibilities frontier, which is also known as the PPF. So let's say that you and a group of friends are stranded on a deserted island after a plane crash, and you have to make decisions about how much food to collect and how much clothing to produce, right? So your production decisions are about food and clothing. And so you can have two different, or you can have a number of different combinations. You can produce four units of food and zero units of clothing. You can produce three units of food and four units of clothing, etc. right? So we've got these different combinations, right? And the PPF, remember, it's just a graph of the different combinations of goods and, or services that could conceivably be produced, right? So it's all the different combinations of the maximum, right? So we're gonna have a curve, and along that curve is gonna be all the maximum points that we could have uh, of food and clothing. So let's graph this out. So we're gonna start and we're gonna, I'm just gonna draw a simple graph here. So here's our graph. And I'm gonna put food, let's put food on the y-axis, okay? And then we're gonna put clothing on the x-axis. And I'm making the x-axis a lot longer because we're gonna go from zero to 10 in clothing, right? So, so here's our clothing over here. So this is our, our number of units of clothing and number of units of food. So our food, we've said could go, it could go from zero up to four, right? So from zero to four units, so we'll have one, and then this will be two, three, four, right? So that's how you, you, just, you just map out on the axis one of the goods, and now we're gonna map out this clothing, and the clothing is gonna go from zero to 10. So that's why I've driven, drawn a much longer line there for the x-axis. So let's say we've got here one, two, three, four, hope I left myself enough space there. We, we can extend it out if not. Uh, just barely. Okay, I know this isn't to scale, forgive me. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna plot the points, right? So four units of food is zero units of clothing. So we can we can plot that, we can say, okay, four units of food is going to be right here because this is the origin, right? So this would be zero units of clothing. And so four, zero, we can think about this 0 0.40. And then we've got 0.34. So three units of food is going to correspond to four units of clothing. And then two units of food, if we look up here, is going to correspond to seven units of clothing, right? As we give up, as we give up some food, we're able to get more clothing, right? So now one unit of food will be nine, so that would be right here. And then if we produce no food at all and just decide to starve, we could have 10 units of clothing, and wouldn't we be happy? Okay, so now what we can do is we can just, we can draw our curve. Right? So we can draw our curve through those points. So this is this is our PPF. This is our production possibilities frontier. This tells us at, all, at each of these points, it's telling us the maximum amount of, of goods and services we're able to produce given our current level of resources. Right? Remember, we have limited resources. There's only so many people in our group, or or, or so forth. Right? Or there, maybe there's only so many coconuts, or so much food on the island. Okay, so we have to make trade-offs. Now, if you think about this, and you look and you say, okay, basically, for us to go from zero, so again, this is, here, here's our, I'm gonna write this, and this is the origin, so this is zero. So if we had zero units of food, for us to go to one unit of food, how much clothing do we give up? So you can, you can look at the table, if you want, or you can look at the graph. So look at the table here for zero to one for us to produce. If we produce no food and we're like, hey, we're starving, let's produce some food. And we go to one unit of food, we give up one unit of clothing, right? So we could say that the marginal cost of, of one unit of food for, well, from going from zero to one, right? From going to zero to one unit of food, the marginal cost is one unit of clothing. So we give up one clothing to get one food. But then to get 
the second unit of food, we give up two units of clothing. All right, so we give up two. And then to get the third unit of food, so assuming we have two units and we go to three, we give up three units of clothing. You notice that? All right, so three clothing. Oh, excuse me, this should be a this should be a two. Right? So we go, we go, we give up one clothing to get the first food. We give up two clothing to get the second food. Three clothing, seven minus four, to get the third piece of food. And then we give up four clothing if we want to get see if we want to go from three food having three food to four food, we give up four units of clothing because we end up we, we had four and then we get to zero. Now the production, so that's why the PPF, as we've drawn it out here, that's why it has this bowed out shape. It has this bowed out shape because of increasing opportunity cost or increasing marginal cost, right? So when we're producing no food at all and we're just dedicating everyone on the island to producing clothing, we see that to say, okay, well, let's just have one unit of food. To get that, we don't give up that much clothing here. We only give up one unit. We only give up one unit. But then when we go for that last unit of food, we give up a lot of clothing. And why might that be the case? And that's because resources are not equally productive, right? So they're, they're not equally productive. So we might have somebody in our group that's real, that maybe they're a professional tailor and they're really good at producing clothing, right? But there are other people who don't know anything about making clothing. So if we do nothing but make clothing for our entire group and we say, okay, well, hey, let's produce some food here. And we go to one. We don't give up that much clothing because maybe someone in our group really was terrible at making clothing, but they're good at collecting food. So we only give up one clothing. We only give up one unit of clothing to get one piece of food. But as we go along this curve, we see that we have this increasing marginal cost of what we're giving up we're giving up for that to get that last unit of food to go from three to four units of food we give up four units of clothing and we do it because maybe that person who's a tailor and that's their specialty is making clothing maybe they're, maybe they're a lot better at making clothing than they are at, at collecting food right and so we'll see this this boat out shape now it does not have to be that boat out shape if resources were equally productive Right. Let's say that it was you substitute one unit of food for one unit of clothing or something like that. Right. Then you could just have a straight line. Right. So let's let's say, for example, that it was the case where we could either produce four units of clothing and no food or no uh, no clothing and four units of food. Right. You could have a straight line. You could have a straight line and say, OK, to give up one unit of food. Hey, we get uh, we, we get one unit of clothing and vice versa. So you could you, you, hypothetically you could even have the curve like that, right? So the PPF could be a number of ways, but in an economics textbook and stuff, basically you're going to see this bowed out shape. And now because I had ten items here for clothing and only four for food, it looks a lot longer than maybe what you've seen. If you've got an, an econ textbook or something, you're probably seeing something like you're probably seeing something like the following. We just come with a simple graph, and then you just see this this nice curve, right? And again, this curve is reflecting the fact that we're not we're not going like this generally because resources are not equally productive. As we produce more and more of a good, as we produce more and more food to get that last unit of food, we're giving up a lot more clothing than we did to get that first unit of food. And we'll talk about that more in the, in the videos to come.